What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are taking a look at our new addition to the Autotop NL garage which is well one of our favorites really. It is a 1993 Honda Civic and this is the EG model and it used to be a 1.5 DXi. It is no longer that. It has had a B18 swap and recently it has had a K20 A2 swap. So this now is a K20 swapped Honda Civic EG and it is amazing. Uh, we bought it a couple of weeks ago and well ever since we've been having so much fun with this car. So today I'm going to show you around it. We'll take a deep dive into like the current condition of the car with our new technician Hoop. And after that, I'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. So what we've got is a 1993 Honda Civic. As I said, it's an EG series, which means it was built between 1991 and 1995. And it is just epic. It is small. It used to be very economical. It is quite spacious inside. And yeah, it is just the epitome of a Civic for me. This is what a Civic looks like in my mind, uh, which I really like. So. At the front we've got a nice little bumper here with sort of a splitter deal going on there. Uh, the bonnet used to be wrapped and uh, the previous owner pulled off the wrap and it took away a lot of the clear coat. So uh, I don't know what we're going to do with that. We might do like a carbon hood or we might just leave it like it is because I also quite like the zero fucks given look to be honest. It has also been set up to, you know, extract a bit more hot air from there which is also quite a cool look and we've got these japan racing wheels as i've shown you in the introduction video with toyo proxess r 1r tires these are 195 section tires at the front uh, on a 15 inch wheel there are some very very cool wheels out there for this car so we might look into that i do quite like the look of these wheels so we might keep them we've got upgraded brakes at the front and we've got a brake disc conversion at the rear so they used to be drums but they are discs now uh, which is very nice braking performance is quite impressive we've got 195 tires at the rear as well 15 inch and we've got reaction coilovers for the suspension uh, they are actually adjustable i can show you guys so let me just grab the key and I can show you a couple of the very cool things about this car. Number one, it's got a split tailgate, uh, which I think is just amazing. I never knew that this car actually has this, which is why, why does it have that? That is so cool. And then you can see the hard race strut here and we've got adjustable suspension there. So I've got it all the way to the left now. So that means all the way on the softest setting. Uh, which is very nice and it actually makes a big difference because when I drove here this morning it was all messed up uh, so it wasn't even equal from left to right front to rear now everything is at its softest and it's actually doable on the autobahn we also have a carbon fiber uh, tailgate for this car which we are going to install which will look amazing that's also why I think we should have a carbon fiber bonnet so bumper with the moles, which I just love that look and a massive tailpipe. Uh, this is what a Honda exhaust should look like, but it's not all the way. So it's a two and a quarter inch basically uh, exhaust, which kind of restricts the power quite a bit. And then you can see the heart race control arms as well, bright blue. And well, I love that because when you sit behind the car, or when you drive behind the car, in a low car, you can actually see that light blue. I hope you guys can see that. That looks so cool. Yeah, it's amazing. It is amazing. Uh, we did lose some window trim here or door trim during the top speed run earlier. So yeah, we have to replace that as well. And let me just show you guys the engine. So, as I said, it is a K20A2 swap. So this is the engine from a Honda Civic EP3. 
and it fits in here beautifully again with the hard race components there the adjustable suspension we've got these Haasport engine mounts uh, we've got a skunk pro intake inlet manifold intake manifold and uh, well We've got a couple of things that are really, really good about this setup. I mean, a lot of the work has been done for us, which is really nice. But of course, we wanted to know in what kind of condition it was uh, in general. So we took it to Hoop and he is going to tell you about the current state of the car. Hi guys, uh, my name is Hoop. As you might have heard, uh, Max already spoke about my name in the last video that you guys saw, the EG. Um, I'm from Trackworks Motorsports. I'm the co-owner here. Um, I'll be helping the guys out with this Civic project and maybe upcoming future projects. So um, as you guys can see, what we have here is an EG with a K20A2 from an EP3 Type R. Also EP3 Type R gearbox. It has some goodies. Uh, for example, it has a Skunk 2 Pro uh, manifold. Um, it has Hasport mounts. The car has a K-Tune shifter. We did a quick check over on the car to check that everything was fine. Of course, the car made it here, so that's a very good sign already. Um, to go over a few things, um, yeah, the car has heart race parts, so heart race control arms in the front, in the rear. It has reaction coilovers, uh, cars on JR wheels. The car also obviously uh, has a few uh, downsides. Um, one of them is uh, the radiator bracket, as you can see right here, uh, it's missing. It's something that we're gonna have to look into because this is from a different model. So we're gonna look into what will be the solution there. Um, also, uh, the PCV line is still on there. Um, not exactly sure if it's already closed or that it needs replacement. Um, it has a leak on one of the axles, also something, nothing too major. It's gonna be a quick fix, uh, making sure that it doesn't leak. Also has a small leak on the valve cover, so something that we'll also be looking into. It has a bit of a, a floppy intake at the moment. Doesn't affect performance, of course, but something that you definitely want to, to look at because we don't want this intake coming off anytime soon. Aside from that, the car in general, uh, very good shape, I would say. Chassis-wise, in very nice shape. Interior will need some work. Sitting, seating positions in this car is not that great as Max probably already experienced. You have to be lay low because otherwise, yeah, you, you won't fit. So that's something that we will be definitely uh, addressing. Uh, aside from that, the car will probably get a carbon hood, a few carbon goodies to just look that bit better. Aside from that, I would say goodbye. In general, has all the right parts. Um, probably makes good power. This will, will be something that also will be uh, looked at in the future. One of the limiting factors at the moment is the exhaust. Welds are a bit, um, yeah, DIY, I would say. And also the diameter is a bit too small. It's currently two and a quarter inch and uh, it could benefit from a three inch exhaust, which will definitely improve power. But aside from that, goodbye. Everything seems solid. Car. The next thing that will happen to the car is an alignment and a corner balancing because the car currently is all over the place. So this will definitely improve the overall experience and, and then you guys will definitely see this car being out on the Autobahn soon. So that is that. Thank you very much Hoop for your insight. Uh, apparently we bought quite a good car and uh, I'm really, really happy about that. I mean, this engine is just magic. Uh, as I said, it used to be 1.5. At some point there was a B18 engine in here, 1.8, uh, this is the K20. But the best engine you could get in this car basically uh, was a B16 VTEC 1.6. That was the most powerful uh, Civic EG. Well, in South Africa it also came with a B18 uh, from an Integra, I think. But in all the other countries the B16 was the best engine. This K20 though, it fits in this thing like a glove. And it suits the car so well. It's been tuned by sneaky tuning, as you can see. So it's running around 235 horsepower right now. And it weighs, you know, between 900 and 1,000 kilos. It's like something like 930 or 950. Uh, so it's super, super light. Now let's get in and I'll show you guys one of my favorite things about the entire car, which is this shifter. Look at that thing. This is a work of art. I. I love it so much. It used to be a four-speed automatic, and uh, it is now this absolutely gorgeous six-speed manual with this insane shifter. I mean, 
just the fact that look at that moving and oh it, it is such a nice shift oh just the, the sound of it alone the height is really nice as well uh, the ac is gone by the way we do need a couple of gauges here because we ha have a temperature gauge that's not really working well it's not working at all to be honest um, and other than that the interior is completely stock so we have the stock seats which are not great i also just found out that this one is not really attached all the way so i think it's the right rear something is i mean it's not coming out or anything but it's not really secure and uh well we, we have to do like a, a bucket seat here a different steering wheel and uh, then we should be good to go now let's start it up as i said and hoop showed you we've got that weird exhaust that is kind of a mix and match of different uh, diameters so we need a three inch exhaust front to rear and uh, that is going to help a lot with the power and also with the sound because now i mean i like the fact that you basically only hear the engine but there's very little exhaust sound actually okay so let's go for a drive now something else we need to fix is the steering because lock to lock it's quite a journey so you have to there's a lot of steering input needed it's very indirect now the alignment of the car was absolutely horrible when we got it uh, i said that on the introduction video as well oh, manual manual labor You can hear the VTEC kicking in at like five and a half thousand RPM. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, we had the alignment done today. Let me just close the window. <laughs> we had the alignment done today at J Classics in uh, Beugen, which is close to here in the Netherlands. And uh, it is such a big difference. So it used to be very weird and sketchy all over the place, very unpredictable. The steering itself still is, is, is kind of weird, but at least the car now goes where you expect it to go, which is uh, always a nice thing. Um, and uh, as I said, with those dampers in the most soft setting, it actually absorbs everything really well. So the ride height is super low, but it's actually not bad. It's not bad at all. Now, another amazing feature I already showed you guys in the uh, introduction video, but we also have launch control because we have a Doctronic ECU. So we just, you can like keep the RPM at three and then floor it and then it stays there. But it doesn't really work because you just have a lot of wheel spin. Uh, so the faster thing to do is just to keep it at three yourself and then sort of gradually launch the car in a more civilized manner. And Martijn actually was able to do a 5.7 to 100, which I think is actually quite quick. Oh, listen to that engine. Oh man, it actually goes around the corner properly now. Whew, so he did the alignment and the camber and stuff like that and I think it's it's a really really big improvement. to turbocharge this car because you don't want us to like sacrifice the naturally aspirated character of this car and uh, I think you can go like 300 horsepower naturally aspirated if you really want it but I mean a turbo just works so well with this engine 
So I think if we're going to mod it, we might do a turbo. We might also do a supercharger. Maybe we should do a supercharger first and then do a turbo later. That could also be cool. But before we hit the Autobahn, I just want to take you on a different POV drive around Spa in a Formula One Ferrari on our new Moza Racing sim setup. Moza Racing is a company dedicated to making the best sim race hardware available and they do it at an affordable price. They offer really good quality and we are now selling these sim rigs in our shop, autotopnl.shop. Go check it out. We've got this ultimate version with three screens and we also have a more compact version with one widescreen monitor. So we've got a direct drive force feedback steering system. As you can see, we've got a no flex pedal box. So in this big braking zone, I can actually hit that brake. And it also means that you actually have a resemblance of steering feel because you can judge how much input you need. Uh, so we've also got a HD dash behind the steering wheel there. Uh, these steering wheels are interchangeable. So this is the formula steering wheel with a, a little dash on it, but we also have different versions. So you can have a look in our store, which one you like best. But this of course is the big setup, more suitable for, you know, if you have a man cave or a lot of room or a gaming room or something like that, this is super nice. Or maybe an office or a waiting room in a dealership, but we also have a more compact version which you can see right here. Uh, it comes with a gaming PC with all the necessary software and we ship it in a crate, plug and play, ready to race. So worldwide, you will get this thing assembled almost to completion. So you don't have to assemble too much yourself before you start racing. So if you're interested, go check out autotopnl.shop for our Moza racing setups. Enjoy the rest of the video. Oh. So we have a shift light, which is the engine warning light, basically the check engine light that comes on to let you know that you have to shift. Quite the, quite the sight to behold. 
but it's just too good. It, it's, uh, it's much, much better than I was expecting, to be honest. I thought that we were going to do a, a high-speed run, a top-speed run, and it was going to feel dangerous, but it really doesn't.